amigos, Rory Foster here. It's time for another medical Spanish quick tip. Today's quick tip is really tempting. It's super easy mistake to make because it's a false cognate. It's a word that looks like a word. Uh, in English and Spanish, there are two words that are spelled basically the same way, but they don't mean the same thing. They mean different things. That's what a false cognate is. And so uh, remember, our quick tips are sponsored by our Mastering Medical Spanish series of courses. This is uh, a, a series of courses, beginning, intermediate, and advanced medical Spanish that we offer twice a year. And it's truly the best way for you to improve your medical Spanish. And our quick tips are little errors and suggestions that we hear and make to our students through throughout the MMS course. So we're in our first session of 2022 at the moment. And our quick tip for today is, ¿Cómo se dice quit en español? How do you say quit in Spanish? And so there is a verb that is spelled an awful lot like quit, and it's the verb quitar. But that's the number one error mistake when people are trying to say quit in Spanish. They use the verb quitar. Well, the problem is quitar is the verb to take out or take away. And so it doesn't fit your stop or quit when you want to say that. So here's some examples. Necesita, quitar, fumar. Uh, it doesn't make sense. What you're trying to say is you need to stop smoking or something like that, right? But here it's like take away to smoke or something. It doesn't work. Uh, si tiene una reacción alérgica, if you have an allergic reaction, debe quitar la medicina. What you want to say is if you have an allergic reaction, you should stop the medicine, right? But here it's take away the medicine. I mean, it kind of makes a little more sense in this second example, but uh, it's still not the best verb to use. What we want to do is just figure out the best way to say stop doing something, right? Okay, so some mejores opciones. When it comes to stop doing another action, your best equivalent for uh, stop is dejar de. So dejar de with a verb is to stop an action or to stop a habit. So here's an example. El paciente dejó de usar drogas el año pasado. So the patient stopped using drugs last year. Y gracias a Dios no ha recaído. And thank God he hasn't relapsed, okay? So when we want to say uh, like uh, quit, like resign or leave from something, that's a different context of quit. And so that's the verb renunciar a. So renunciar a and then whatever you're leaving or resigning from. Maybe it's a job or something like that. So here's an example with a job. Muchas enfermeras han renunciado a sus trabajos durante COVID. A lot of nurses left their jobs during COVID. Esperamos que regresen pronto. We hope they return soon. See? Okay, so when you want to say quit in the context of leaving or resigning from something, it's a different verb. It's renunciar a. Okay, when it's quit, when it's in the context of stopping doing an action, that's dejar de. Now, there's another verbo, when, another case where we say quit like an object. Uh, quit, I don't know if it's drinking, like quit the bottle or, you know, quit whiskey or, you know, I don't know what it might be or, or quit a medication or stop a medication kind of thing. So here's the best uh, ejemplo para eso would be dejar or suspender, either verb, dejar or suspender. The difference is here we had dejar de with a verb. Now it's dejar with a noun, sustantivo. So let's look at some examples. Es importante no dejar el medicamento cuando se sienta mejor. It's important not to quit your meds when you're feeling better. Okay? So that's the dejar use. Let's use suspender. Si suspende el antibiótico, if you stop your antibiotic antes de terminarlo before finishing it, puede causar una infección peor. You can cause a worse infection. Okay, so here are three good equivalents uh, of quit in Spanish used in different contexts. First, quitting an action. Second, quitting or resigning a job. Third, quitting an object or, you know, stopping an object, okay? Bien. Preguntas, if you have questions, post them down below. Uh, este video, por favor. And by the way, if you've learned something new today, make sure you subscribe to this video uh, and uh, share it with others so they can keep, uh, keep learning más español médico también. 
Speaking of more español médico, gracias por aprender español conmigo juntos. Realmente estamos mejorando comunidades. Para más español, head over to commongroundinternational.com, the website, and there's all sorts of blogs and free lessons and everything uh, for español médico. And if you'd like to take a medical Spanish terminology test, head over to Certified Spanish, create your free account, and you can take an unlimited number of medical Spanish terminology tests. All right, nos vemos la próxima vez, amigos. Chao.